Um, so before we begin, I know you're all suffering from trauma, so we're going to make this a little interactive. I've got three maps here, uh, and uh, I'm going to um, ask along um, these uh, as you uh, pass these maps to the people behind you. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone. So uh, yeah, good afternoon. Um, my name is Ming Nguyen, and I'm Lay Smalley. And uh, we're here to explore what it means for OSM Americana to be an international American map. So uh, a little bit about me, I collect maps like the ones that you're looking at now. And there's a whole tradition uh, around how to design these maps for a North American audience. Um, even those of us who don't collect maps uh, still absorb a lot of these conventions without, without really you know, collecting them or anything, just because we were around them all the time. Um, so for a bit of perspective, this is OSM Cardo. This is the standard map style when you go to osm.org. When I first started using OSM, this style took some getting used to, uh, because it didn't follow any of those familiar conventions. And maybe you had a similar experience. The style can't and probably won't accommodate regional conventions because it's pursuing one size fits all uh, model for the whole world. So to fill that gap, a couple of years ago, some of us started designing a new uh, mouse style called OSM Americana um, that adapts OSM to what Americans might expect from a map. I'll be honest with you, um, we're not designers or experts or anything, um, we're mostly mappers and coders. Uh, so every time we need to add something, we survey existing published maps to get a sense for the industry's consensus. The challenge is that the tagging conventions in OSM data can make uh, very different distinctions than you might see in an American road atlas. Um, like what is even an unclassified highway? You know, what's the difference between a city and a town? Um, we work within this constraint, which means sometimes departing from a literal interpretation of those road atlases. Finally, we apply internationalization best practices, but subtly uh, to take this aesthetic into the modern era and expand the audience beyond map collectors. The choices we've made uh, are often very different than other OSM-based maps. So for example, um, well, this uh, slide didn't really work out, but uh, the railroad tracks on an American map um, normally look like railroad tracks. So they're, they're a little bit, uh, they actually literally look like what a Swiss map might as an, um, uh, for an aerial lift. And uh, the roads on an American map don't look like true but the route markers sure do. So, uh, for, uh, so for people abroad who find an American map intuitive, we recently added a legion. Unlike the legions of paper maps, this legion dynamically adapts to what you're looking at. Now, someone who lives in Lisbon, say, will see familiar examples right away. This is much more effective than reading the OS thousands of words of explanation on the OSM wiki. Another recent improvement is labeling all the places in the language you speak. This is great for when you're reading the news and you're trying to understand where events are taking place around the world. You have a much better place, a chance of placing uh, Warsaw in world history than Warsaw. But, but all the world doesn't speak English, so it's also good to know that the local is called Warsaw. We show both things when possible. This is actually a convention from paper maps that um, fell out of the use over the past couple of decades with online maps. But the need for understanding world geography has only grown during that time, so we're bringing it back. There are gets localized content from three sources. Names, for, uh, names from OSM, item labels from Wikidata as a fallback, and finally, for country and label uh, language names, the Yoko Consortium's CLDR. All three sources are intended for machine readability, but OSM's names come with some caveats. Um, the primary name key represents the name of the local language. When there are multiple local languages, as in these cases, OSM often includes all of them on equal standing, which is great. What's not so great is that the local mappers in each region have come up with their own ways to separate them, dashes, slashes, spaces, even when these characters can also be part of an actual name. We still try to show both the preferred and local language, but you can see how whatever names gets duplicated, fluttering the map. Here's a town from New York that has two names of equal importance, English and Yiddish. We no longer, we no longer duplicate the uh, English name because the two names are separated by a semicolon on the right there. As more of OSM adopts this convention, uh, we'll be able to intelligently clean up labels, select fonts, and even support screen readers without crashing them. This is a change from how uh, mappers have always done things, but it takes the guesswork out of using OSM's names. And guesswork is bad because it takes control away from mappers when they most need it. This focus on multilingualism is also, also matters here at home too because uh, we're such a diverse society in the US. On the previous slide, we looked at a place in New York that where over 90% of the residents speak, speak Yiddish and only half speak English at all. 
We have dozens of major or official languages in this country. But even speakers of smaller minority languages deserve to see a map entirely in their language, not just where it's convenient to because it's official. For example, many indigenous communities, such as Navajo, um, have ties to places beyond their federally recognized boundaries. Many immigrant uh, languages have no official status anywhere. This is an audience that isn't really acknowledged by any other map, but always is trying, and Americana is recognizing that effort. What we're doing also benefits the OSM community. The Arcana is not intended to be with a one true depiction of the world. We want other local communities to honor and promote their own local cartographic traditions too. We're laying the groundwork for them to do so more easily and create a common space for collaborating on improvements that benefit everyone. Now, Clay will talk about one aspect of cartography where we've already made progress towards that goal. So Min was mentioning earlier route shields, and that's something we really want to get right in Americana. So most road, road atlases in the States feature map markers that resemble the signs you see when you're driving. You might see that on the, on the maps we're passing around. And while we're shooting for an American aesthetic, OSM is supposed to be a map of the whole, whole world. So route shields ended up being a little bit of an internationalization project in and of itself. I don't, I don't have hard data on this, but I would bet that the U.S. has the most complicated and most fragmented numbering system in the world for highways. So adopting a machine-readable tagging scheme for, that covers every route is no small feat. And we learned a lot, of, a lot of lessons in how easy other countries have it. <laughs> and there's two overlapping tagging schemes for a number of highways. One that goes on ways and one that goes on relations. And to be clear, neither way is wrong. Different countries have different needs. Like the, the doing it on uh, doing it out of the ways makes sense for countries like the UK, where routes never overlap. And the numbering system is really straightforward. But for the US, where we have a lot of overlapping routes and a lot of different networks, it makes a lot sense, a lot more sense to do it with relations. It, it gives us a lot more flexibility. And as we know, as you mentioned, uh, OSM Card OS attempts to be a single style for the entire world of mappers, and that gives it a lot of unique constraints. And route numbers are taken from ways and represented in a really basic uniform way that doesn't look really recognizable to an American. Everything's in a rectangle. And the German map style is a fork of Carto with, with some modifications that make it look a little bit more like a German road atlas, but the issue here is that it applies German route markers to the entire world. So, yeah, they, didn't, it, they localized it, but they didn't internationalize it. And in Americana, we've chosen to support relation-based tagging for route numbers, so uh, we've had to implement all of these icons state by state and country by country, but we want it to look right no matter where you are in the world. And the roads around Richmond look the way an American would expect to read them on a map, but Germany only has partial support. We're still missing the blue hexagons. Ask me about that later. Um, <laughs> but here's where we do have shield support, thanks to the contributions of mappers around the world who co coordinated with their communities and gave us a lot of helpful feedback. So Canada, this is probably number two for most complicated. Uh, Sweden and Finland, Netherlands, Venezuela, Aotearoa, New Zealand and Australia. And all the countries highlighted in purple are, uh, are where we have shield support, so it's partial, help us fill out the map, please. Um, but yeah, we finally packaged it as a library so you can use it yourself if you, uh, you know how to work with Map Libre. Right. So yeah, try out Americana for yourself um, at this first link. Uh, we update it with OSM, the latest OSM data regularly. Uh, please send feedback our way through the GitHub repository, that's the second link. And if you're a designer or a coder, please talk to us. Um, we'll be around the conference with some examples of paper maps that inspired us. Also hiring. I'm looking for jobs. <laughs> Any questions?